All right, well, welcome to Whiskey Tango Talks. I'm here with Instructor Jay and Instructor Karen uh, with Guardian Training and Consulting. Uh, we did a brief video on Instagram prior to them coming on. For those that didn't see it, uh, I couldn't get it to fit the screen for some reason. Uh, but uh, Nance did, so he retagged it and uh, posted it. Uh, but welcome. I'm glad to have you on. Cheers, first of all. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so, so much. Thanks for having us. I know, I appreciate it. it. So, <clears throat> prior to you guys coming on, I had Mike <clears throat> and Joe on, and we talked a little bit about tactical training. And so they forward your name to me in kind of a group message, which I appreciate the shout out and local businesses helping local businesses. Yep. Even though I'm not a business, we are a podcast and we want to do what we can to help Arizona in a whole. Um, go ahead and tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Karen? Or I got it? All right. Yeah. Well, I guess I got it. Uh, so Guardian Training Consulting was started, the genesis of Guardian Training Consulting uh, started when Karen and I met. Um, we met about two years ago. Uh, we worked for a local gun range. And uh, a lot of that was we, we were teaching together and we taught separately. But what we started to notice um, before we really synergized with Guardian was we, we, have a, we have a recipe, I guess, of success. That's the best way of explaining it is. Uh, we can reach demographics that otherwise alone we could not reach. Um, so we started teaching for the local gun range, and, it, and it, it went well, but they wanted us to teach within a certain specific curriculum. You're gonna, we're going to put us in a box. Um, uh, and we got, the, we got the talks of, you're doing too much too fast too soon. Um, we have to sell the next class. And it's no disrespect to local gun ranges because we have to work with them because we have to do live fire shooting there. But a lot of their, their mentality is, because I've worked for three in the Valley, um, is sell guns which they don't make money actually on guns. Um, but they use training as a conveyance for those products. So uh, that leads to guns, leads to magazines, leads to all that. So with, when we left, we said, you know what, we're going we're gonna to start a company on our own. And when we started that company, our mission was, what we, we po chose the name very, very specifically, um, Guardian. Uh, we did not want to be a tactical company that did training. We want to be a training company that can teach tactics. And so we chose Guardian. And the, the aspect of Guardian uh, means you're, um, you're a guardian of your family, you're a guardian of your community, you're a guardian of your children um, and your friends or whatever means to you, your congregation. Um, but that mindset is, is yours to own. We just provide the service for you to be successful in that guardian mindset. Um, then our logo, we've we had to rebrand our logo. We re yeah, I was going to ask about that. It was literally the day after we took your guys' <laughs> course that you come out with a new logo. So what's yes. that? So Go we rebranded our logo. Uh, we started with the G with the angel wing on the side. Um, working uh, working with uh, Travis Haley. I work with Haley Strategic. Uh, working with a lot of pe people in the industry, they're like, it's just way too busy. And, okay. Um, but, yeah, go ahead. So, I was going to say, we, we hired a, uh, the original logo that we came up with. We actually hired a, um, we hired a, uh, what do you call them, a, a graphic artist. And so, we were doing everything, like, remotely. And I actually have an art background and so I was trying to sketch it and it was kind of frustrating for me to have to give it to somebody else to to, to render come, their own to render yeah. their own and it just wasn't right it never really was right it was good and people were kind of attracted to it because you know we would go out in public with our shirts on and people would for just some reason look when I us. saw the old logo I, I thought fox I don't know why fox, fox. like just the animal like, okay. I don't know why. Uh, uh, oh, because of the wing, probably? Maybe Fox Hill. So another thing we know. had uh, that ruined Karen was one of our friends looked at it and thought... Oh, so, yeah, one of our really good friends. We love him dearly, but, you know, as brutally honest, he said, oh, it looks like a mullet. The a wing looks like a mullet. And I was like, Fox oh, Fox. you, you son of a... Now I can't not yeah. see that. Yep. And then I discovered that if... And going off of what Travis um, kind of... He's kind of been mentoring us a little bit. Uh, he showed us that if you actually put some um, pictures into PowerPoint, you can manipulate them. And because I had that art background, and back in the day, I was taking Adobe Illustrator, but it was so many years ago. 
I was like, oh my God, why didn't I notice this before? I could have messed with our own logo right. a long Render, time ago. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I just felt like I needed a graphic artist to do that. So we, we started messing around and I found something like this online. I was able to manipulate it a little bit. And now it depicts more of what we were kind of going after. It kind of looks like hands that are kind of cupping, yeah. you know, um, wings, you know, like angel wings yeah. without it being too religious or too... Um, you know, just two pigeonholed. So yeah, we didn't want it to be. T- and then we wanted to leave. Specific. And we wanted to leave the center blank because that is your what you're guarding. That right. is what's important to you. And the reason it's blank is because we're not going to tell you what's important to you. You're that's that's a the motivations for you to attend training and to be a, become a guardian is totally yours. We just provide you the tools well, and the training for that. Perfect, perfect segue, right? So I'm regular Joe Smo listening to the podcast. Why come to Guardian? Why obtain a concealed carry license uh, here in Arizona when you don't need one? Sure. So um, a lot, we get that question a lot. Right. Uh, both from a from a uh, respectful manner, like you asked, why, or we get the trolls that are like, right. uh, this is a constitutional carry state. Why do you need a Why do you need a concealed carry permit? Yeah, I know my rights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and usually, when they're in the backseat of a patrol car, that's usually what they say. Uh, I know my rights. Well, you're in the backseat of a patrol car, um, but. Uh, that's a great question. So there, one is the training. What we've been, I've been teaching this class for now six years. This not guardians class, but a form of concealed carry permit um, classes for six years in Arizona. Um, the first and foremost thing we get is is training, um, because we we talk about ignorance of law is not an affirmative defense of said law. I didn't know. Well, that really doesn't that doesn't fly at all in in a court of law. So the training that's the big part, um, knowing where to carry, where not to carry. Uh, we all, I also say who not to shoot and who to shoot. We won't give you a list of names. Yeah. We won't do that. Right. Uh, but And then the big question is how do I interact with law enforcement when, um, and this, when I'm armed? And, That's and a this, big thing. And, and that was my favorite part of the training. Really? Uh, yes, because <clears throat> we you had made a comment about the first thing you do when you get pulled over when you have a weapon in the car is not to stick your hands out of the car like a felon. And I specifically remember looking over at Robbie going, oh, I was told to put my hands out the car, so that's what I do. Yeah. And right as I said that, you're like, don't put your hands out of the car. <laughs> you look like a felon. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, well, hear them out. Let's figure out why. Sure. You know, and the step-by-step process and <clears throat> as, as law enforcement walking to the car, you never know what's going to happen. And... Approaching the situation calmly, as you explained it, for the police officer, for yourself, to maintain a respectful relationship, to let that officer know, I do have a weapon in the car, you know, this is where it's at, this is, you know, uh, versus sticking your hands out the window, Mm -hmm. now you don't know what the, like, hostile threat could be. Sure. Why are their hands out their window? Mm -hmm. What have they done in the past? Do I need to, you know, know who's really behind the, the... will of this car now sure you know what's the situation like why are they put it did they do something correct so uh for me it was kind of an eye opener really the, yeah and the other one was uh i think somebody in the class had said uh uh hands on the window or hands on the roof mm-hmm. or something like that mm-hmm. uh which um i mean i get the hands on the window you're showing clear that there's nothing in your hands but yeah but your take on it was great I, it. I've never really heard anybody explain why that's a problem. So. Yeah. Well, I think it's just kind of a red flag, you know, it kind of, it's distracting. Mm-hmm. So just act normal, keep your hands on the wheel like you normally would anyway. So when people do those weird movements, it's, it just draws our attention and it might be distracting us from something else. Um, but to go back to your question, you asked about why Guardian, why I come to us for yeah. training. And it's simply because of our training and experience. So we can, we can field all of those questions from every student, from every background, we'll be able to answer that due to our training and experience. It's not something we've read in a book or <laughs> watched in a video like that, yeah. or it's not something learned. And it's, again, no, no disrespect to, to those that are out there in the training world and they may not have this combination of, of training and experience that we have together, which just makes us kind of a... You know, dare I say it, we're, we're a little bit of a powerhouse. We're male, female. We've got tons of, 
you know, uh, law enforcement background and and just teaching experience, and it just makes us a little bit more ahead of the game than most, I think. So I will say this about your class, and uh, and this I'm not saying it because you guys are here on my podcast. I didn't have to have you on. You no. guys didn't have to come on. You're right. This was completely genuine. This was completely um, just 100% like these are good people. Right. A lot. Your your class teaches community, and that's what people need to understand. The um, as law enforcement and somebody who you know has never been law enforcement, I am prior military, but I mean there's still an understanding of what you guys do. For those that don't understand, the community that you created in your class for understanding what law enforcement have to go through, and that community has been <clears throat> battered. It has been bashed in media, and, and in the public eye, cops are the enemy right now. Mm -hmm. There's No one wants to be a cop right now. Nobody. Yeah. Because of the shit you guys take on a day-to-day -day basis. The community that you build for people that come to take your class show that you are fucking regular people too. Yeah. And that that part of the class is like, oh shit, like more people need to take this class so they understand why it's prudent to carry, sure. why it's, you know, not prudent for some people to carry. <laughs> you know, yeah. like cuz cuz there there are imbeciles out there. Like oh, just sure. this morning during our photo shoot, we took the shotgun out. Didn't bother anybody with it. We're obviously carrying a bunch of props for the shoot and it wasn't until we left an area that somebody went and told the office of where we were at that they felt uncomfortable about the shotgun and After. they needed to leave the premises. Yeah. yeah, so they asked us to leave. But it's like, what were we doing wrong Correct. with that shotgun? It Correct. wasn't pointed at anybody. It wasn't. It's a prop. We used it strictly for a prop and we were still asked to leave sure. because of uneducated people. Correct. And that and that's really what it comes down to. I mean, I even, I, I'll give you another example. I, I had to... to uh, pick up a friend's a friend's kid at school i had my uniform on and i walked in i walked in and somebody i didn't have my full uniform on i had a you know a training polo and, and pants and i had my badge and everything and you know walking towards the door they're like that that's that guy's got a gun it's like well i'm a cop he's a police he didn't they didn't approach me oh. they approached somebody else and then i overheard their conversation and the lady that was there is like the lady that the other person is like that, that guy has a gun. It's like, yeah, he's, he's a police officer. Right. He's one of the good guys. <laughs> he's one of the good right. guys. Right. You know, if God forbid there's an, there's an incident that happens and it's, and, it's, and that's, that's the reality that as you get into this job and in into law enforcement, you realize you're, you're viewed as the control in the utter chaos. Right. And, and again, it, it well, you're not wanted until you're wanted. Oh, absolutely. Not. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I've been to a many, I've been to a many gang member houses that are screaming for the police one day, and then the next day we're getting the middle finger salute as we, as we drive by. Right. And you're like, you, I just... Fuck those putos. Right? Well, <laughs> but, but, it's a, but it's a reality, and, and but we still serve them just like anybody else. And that's what it's about, you know, that community. So. And one of the things I, I feel like with media, it's, it's almost like a brainwashing in a sense that... We uh, to use a football term, it's like I feel like we need to throw the flag and say, "Look, people need to understand that they have a right to protect themselves. They, they, you don't have to be a victim. So if if it means carrying, just to be ready, just in case. It's not like we're not trying to force it down anyone's throat. It's just I, go I'm, back to basics of saying, "Look, I don't want to be a victim. Right. And I, I'm going to take control of my life, and I'm not going to let, you know, the media tell me I'm." wrong or feel bad for wanting to protect myself here's the other part of it you you see how in like uh, what was it new york those guys like smashing the cops in the head with like uh, water, the, water, was, the water yeah so but, dumping yeah. water on their heads so, right 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 as so, they're trying to arrest somebody yeah so frustrating you to know watch and that. i see that and i think to myself okay so what happens when the police don't want to police anymore what happens when that happens martial law motherfuckers sure. that's what happens yeah, yeah. and then Instead of having pol police who are there to protect and serve, now you have the military coming in, yep. who are going to be the government. Being the government, on a and yeah, it's going to be yep. head cracking and skull smashing, and they're not there to serve and protect. They're right. there to get order. Correct. And, so, and you make it. You make a great point, and I'll give you. An, I'll give you a classic example. I run into um, <laughs> one of my first pursuits. One of my first pursuits was twenty miles an hour. It was adrenaline pumping brand new officer but it was a 20 mile an hour pursuit 
<laughs> right. And we finally, the vehicle finally stopped, but we did five miles. I was behind this car, lights and sirens, five miles. And this is where you're talking about the police in the United States. We stopped her. She, she you know, we didn't put her at gunpoint or anything, but we, we stopped her. She came out, and she's from another country. And I'm like, why didn't you stop for the police? She's like, because if I stop for the police in my country, they typically kill you. Oh, wow. Like dead right there because yeah. I'm in the wrong neighborhood or I'm going the wrong way or I'm wearing a certain certain garb or I represent a certain family. And that really just struck me because, yeah. because this person comes to the United States possibly for a better life and they're the first law enforcement contact they have. They're terrified. And it was, it was just, I was stopping her for some minute, you know, traffic violation because that's my job to ensure, ensure traffic safety. And the other she, side of that, in, in, in Europe, you're, you're taught to pay the cop for their services. Mm -hmm. In Germany, when your police officer pulls you over, it's $20 out of the pocket. Sure. Hand them, thank you for your service, and then you move along. It's not a bribe. It's a, a payment for their service. Correct. It's just, it's bananas how different or the it is. Or the countless stories of, 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 of us gringos going to Mexico <laughs> and running yeah, into the federal police. Yeah. And so... It, it might have happened in some big cities back in the day, like <laughs> a certain city that I'm familiar with. Yeah, but, it, but, it's, a, but it's a different world that we live in. And, and, I, and no matter how bad this world is getting, that, that we perceive that it's going to shit, yeah. it's truly getting better. In some regards, when you yeah, and when it, you look at it across the board, one hundred percent. I just think media aspect, we're we're going so far south. It's and I didn't say right or left. No, no, it's, it's <laughs> we're going so far south mm -hmm. in in the aspect of uh, our values. Well, let's talk about that really quick. Yeah, go ahead. The far right and the far left. Yeah. They're, in my opinion, they're both out of their minds. Out of their minds. They're out of their minds. Yeah. It's the moderates, it's the people that go, you know, I can see it from that perspective. We've talked about it time and time again on this podcast. And I tell people uh, on personal levels outside of this podcast too. When it comes to my political views, I'm, I'm right-centered. Mm -hmm. When it comes to my social views, I don't give a fuck. You do what you do. I'm very left-wing when it comes to my, my social views. I don't care. As long as you're not harming children, raping women, or killing, I, whatever it is you do, kudos. Have right, at it. Right. I don't care. Sure. When it comes to political views, it's, it's one thing. But when you start talking far right and far left, you go far enough left, you get your guns back. Mm -hmm. You know, those people want to see anarchy. Sure. You go far right, you get like the, the Hillsborough Church, is that what it was? Oh, of them like spitting on yeah Hillsboro yeah spitting oh, the Baptist on soldiers church, the Baptist church yeah. soldiers graves yeah. and mm -hmm. all like it's bananas yeah, I it's like how do your political views become so skewed, scared skewed, yeah. yeah absolutely it's crazy it's great and that's and that's again it's like we we try to you know again I'm gonna give you my take as instructor Jay I truly believe that the U S Constitution is a living document mm -hmm. that's that is like my political views that that the you're a libertarian. US, in that aspect. Um, I, I don't like to be labeled. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a millennial so by birthright. Don't call you a I'm a, I'm a okay. millennial no. by birthright. Um, I'm <laughs> entitled to that. That uh, I'm entitled to that. Uh, that entitled, title. You're not entitled to anything. I'm entitled to that <laughs> title, but I don't identify as it. Got you. Um, but the fact of the matter is, I truly believe that the U.S. Constitution. And it's not a libertarian thing. It's not. A, it's just I truly believe in the greatest values of this country. Mm. And you know, as a veteran, I'm. A vet, but both veterans were, were patriots. Where are they at now, though? What's that? Those values. What do you mean? Where are they at? The I just I want you to look, pocket. I just what? want you to look at everyday life. Where are those values at? It's in my heart and my mind. I mean, that's second, First Amendment. Where's that? I, yeah. Freedom of speech is gone, sir. It is gone. Yeah. You you yeah. get doxxed and you get like berated on social media for saying certain things now. Sure. Mm -hmm. They excommunicate you from sites now. Mm -hmm. You don't have freedom of speech. Your Second Amendment. You got people right now Hell that are yes. doing what take. they can to try to take guns, yeah. and it's like, yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like when you really break it down and look at it, it few and far every yeah. day, a little bit more of that quote unquote freedom yeah. is being. Well, and I think it's coming yeah. back from the division of this country, and you know the 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 such the division <clears throat> of this got, country, and it. I got a great question. Views. 
I got a great question. Don't mean to cut you off. No. What do you do as a police officer, okay, and a former police officer, right, and air marshal, right, when they say, oh, yeah, we have a Democrat in office and we are taking back semi-automatic weapons. What do you do as a police officer when you now are on the side of having to fulfill out those... The laws. Laws. Right. That's a that's a that's a question I've banged around my head uh, a lot, um, and that's where and that's where the the professional side comes in and the the, the personal values comes in, um, because and I think about it's, it's, how it's many of your brothers and sisters out there. Yeah, that that would you know and it's friends, it, it, families. Oh, it's, it's, uncles, it's so many people. It's sisters, so many people. You know. It's so many people, and and I I can't believe it'd be as political as. As some other uh, some other law enforcement officers, but I've looked at it hard and fast, and it's and it, it comes down to, you know, you have to stand up for what what you think is right, and, and if it's and if it's, you know, whatever the case may be, if it's if it's leaving the department or it's you know staying on and, and trying to fix it from the inside in, out, um, but I think it's going to take a movement. Mm-hmm. I think it's and I think it's I think you know looking at recent things that have been said. Um, in, by politicians pertaining to this, the Second Amendment, um, it's going to take a movement to to change that. And mm-hmm. and and I think it's a hard about, it's a hard question. It is. It's a very tough question because I don't know I don't know what I would do. Um, and and we talk about you know we talk about like for example defense scenarios or what I would do if somebody starts shooting. We can have a plan, but you don't really know what you will do when that until that that line comes to your toes. And you have to make a decision whether you step over that line, or you stand on the line, or you step step back from the line. Right. And that's and it, you know and again whether whatever that line means, but it's a, essentially your line in the sand or your line in the dirt that says you know what I'm just I just can't do it. Um, so it's very tough to. I'm still banging around that. I'm still banging <laughs> that in my around in my because head. You never because, know because because I could because happen. I stand for something. Yeah. Um, you know and I'll I'll use a, a great uh, a, f- a friend of mine said the best. I know what I stand for, and I know what I stand against. And and the, I think I think the reason why everybody here in this room gets along so well, is everybody knows where everybody stands, at any given time. Right. And then if, God forbid, it's a surprise. It comes from a level of respect. You know, if you if you have a different view on than me, then pertaining to any 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 situation, you're gonna you're not going to say, well, you're wrong and I'm right. No, it's communication. It's, Correct. Yeah, one hundred percent. And just going, you know what? I think we're just going to have to respect the fact that <clears throat> we're in different positions. Yeah. And that's what makes America great. <laughs> well, you just triggered some people out there. You well, said a key okay. phrase. No. Well, yeah. Well, as a millennial, I can say that. Yeah. And, right. You know what? Well, I think <laughs> it goes. It goes back to what you were saying. You have, you know, your conservative, but leaning, you know, leaning a little to the right. It goes back to that liberal mind thing, mindset of. I respect your views, and you sh- therefore you should respect mine, and together we can agree to disagree. But once it crosses that line of you can't say that or I'm afraid to say something, that's where we're losing You're people. infringing on, on everybody's rights. Yeah. We're, we're losing point. a mass majority of the people in this country because we're forgetting that, that you know you get, you get mad or triggered about what somebody said. You've got to remember it's, they have a right to say that. So right. Everyone and you, needs to just go back lo- to basics. Exactly. You look at it from a logical perspective. You have a shotgun, a double, uh, you know, over/under shotgun right behind you. Right. That is an inanimate object. Right. That is just the same thing as having a pen and paper on on that. Yeah. And it's for those like that saying, don't know an inanimate object, if you punch it, it's not going to scream. <laughs> <laughs> That's the it best way I can it. Doesn't explain animate, it yeah. doesn't animate on its own. It has to exactly. have user interface. Right. User interface yeah. from a user, such as typically a person. Perfect. So. That's an inanimate object. Same thing as a pen. And this is the thing I tell people. They're like, well, guns guns kill people. They were like, made to kill people. Correct. That's they are a tool. Yeah. And they are a tool. Yeah, so I is say, a hammer. Exactly. Hammer. But yeah. I tell this. I say this. You have a book like Mein Kampf, a disgusting, in my opinion, an absolute disgusting publication that was written by an evil man, Adolf Hitler, right. that was responsible for the Holocaust, that, that did, literally destroyed this world um, and destroyed Europe. And then you have the Holy Bible, and I'm not getting I'm not getting religious, but it's the most printed book in the in the world. Also, the number one most Quran- stolen book. Correct. I, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gideon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. 
So, so you look at these two books, and they say they say the, the they say different messages. And we can I'm not going to get on the whole soapbox of yeah, the Holy Bible is responsible for for Holocaust as well. But the messages are different, but yet they're written by either pen, pencil, and paper, typewriter. So do we condemn the printing press? Do we condemn the typewriter? Do we condemn the writing instrument? Yeah. For the authors. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't and disagree beliefs. with you. And the best, the best one that Robbie has said for years was the the Cain and Abel. Cain Cain killed Abel with a raw a rock. You can outlaw rocks. Like yep. right. outlaw everything. Yeah. London London okay. did it. London did it the best, Robbie. I mean, you look at a case study like London, where they outlawed firearms. Right. And yes, shootings go down. And stabbings went. Stabbings through went through the roof. <laughs> and, and now, and then the London and the London mayor is now is is outlawing knives. And now they're going to hydrochloric acid, cool. walking around with with buckets of hydrochloric acid, and they're throwing them on people's faces. Oh, that's crazy. But they well, they did the same thing in Australia too. And then yep. immediately when they did the buyback, because they did like a buyback program, right? Mm-hmm. Like they said they would want to do here. <laughs> like that, though. But, but even yeah. the, the don't call guy, him that. Yeah. That's not whatever his name is. That, you don't. Dude, it's a CNN label. CNN spinning that so bad it's a as label. The, for a Hispanic vote, it's driving me fucking. You mean nuts. the burglar? Yeah. Huh? I'm gonna call him burglar because that's, that's exactly yeah. what I get arrested for. Yeah. yeah. In DUI 97. wasn't it? DUI and burglary. Yeah. 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 Oh, it was both. Yeah. yeah. It was both. Okay. Yep. It, it, yeah. It's a guy, fucking guy. No, so anyways, it, what were you saying? Oh, the buyback. Oh, oh, the buyback. So yeah, in, in, in Australia, when they did the buybacks, immediately home invasions went like. <laughs> Screw the roof. Like, yeah. Hey, there's nothing. Nobody's gonna stop, gonna stop me. Correct. Yeah. I got a Correct. machete. You got. You're in bed asleep. Let's let's yeah. talk about Chicago. <laughs> I knew that was Sh- going up. My, strict, that's my hometown. Actually. Strictest gun laws in the nation. Yeah. Some of them. Yep. Absolutely. Right. Yep. That New York are probably pretty much parallel. Like. Close with each other. I would say Where I don't know if the strict. homicide rate is as high for whatever. No, New reason. York definitely isn't as high as no. Chicago. Yeah, I don't know but, why it's so different. But as there. as for gun laws, though, they're pretty parallel. Right? New York, New York has a seven round, um, has a seven round magazine and law. You can't in carry Chicago. It in city limits. Oh no, absolutely not. You can't yeah, carry in Manhattan. Chicago's you can't law. carry in New York. Okay. Forget it. You're not carrying. So during the class, DC, you had DC. told a story about New York. And a gun situation. And I was thinking of a different story. There was actually a girl whose father had an antique pistol. During a home invasion, the person uh, charged her. She knew where the antique pistol was, had no rounds loaded. She pulled the antique pistol out and pointed at the guy. The guy ran and left. Wow. Called the cops on her. (sighs) They came and had her arrested for having the gun in city limits. That's disgusting. I'm sorry. That's just disgusting. <laughs> like, That's just it disgusting. baffles my mind. Yeah. Like, she protected herself with pretty much a fucking paperweight. Yeah, she she, right? she, <laughs> like, she had a bluff. Yeah. The guy, and got, and and the guy didn't call her bluff. No, but called the cops on her for having a pistol, and she was arrested. That's some balls right there. Isn't it bananas? It's, it's crazy. It's just like the, <laughs> the people who have like a grow house and they get rot, they get they get yeah. burglarized they, and they so steal you all had their told stuff. The sto- you had told the story about her not making it to the furthest part, and that you want to tell the story. So real quick? yeah, I'll tell the story. I don't remember what city it was in. I, I want to say and it was know, Jersey. It, wasn't it? Was it Jersey? I believe. So because yeah, we I think it was. in our CCW class, we talk about the castle doctrine and stand your ground, and uh, and it's. It's so I I love Arizona again coming from Chicago where you, you're taught you know guns are bad you can't have them in city limits and nobody knows why and you forget about the Second Amend- Amendment you forget about your right to protect yourself but coming out to Arizona we're hearing all these stories now about people who um, well I think going back to that New Jersey story she there was a female she was in her house she was being attacked and I think she fought back she was going through the house and she fought back and i think she was in a hallway or she was approaching just out maybe outside the bedroom and when later on and again i don't remember all the details but later on it all comes out that um she was getting hemmed up because she didn't go to the furthest part of the house she retreat she didn't retreat to the furthest part of the house which i'm assuming yes you want to try the tango is this what's tango tango is our blend Ooh, okay. I will never very, turn down whiskey. Very little. You don't want a lot of this. <laughs> As Robbie's laughing, 
<laughs> well, it's Robbie laughing. The last person that tried this ended up puking all over my restroom. Uh oh. Well, be careful. Drunk, out of his mind, drunk. But yeah. well, that this was is a long day. That was a long day. Was You're a good. Of, and a lot of whiskey tango. Yes. A lot of tango. Oh yeah. <laughs> he had he he had a 16 ounce cup of that whiskey. And he was puking. Uh, he concussed himself in my restroom, concussed. and we had yes, he had to go to the hospital the next day. How's that taste? Whoa! Isn't that good? That is like smooth. It is. It's literally. You'll never believe what what that is. All the bite is gone. Mm -hmm. It stays on the palate very warm, mm -hmm. and there's no fire. You'll never believe what that is. Are you gonna? Are you, are you gonna? Should, you want to guess? Do I have to sign a non-disclosure agreement? That's a good idea. It's that's dangerous. That's what that is. Okay. Um, no, the tango is literally every remnants of every whiskey we've ever had on this show. So oh. if it's the last bit of a whiskey in a bottle, we oh. pour it in there. What? I swear. <laughs> That's got that's, that's got good. probably twenty different whiskeys in there. Hmm. Yes. That sounds like a brand idea. And it is delicious. It's it is. It, it I is. like it. It's yeah. We just we should have done yeah. some measuring if we would have known it was going to be that good. We yeah. Because you out. can't create that master. It now. Yes. That right. master. Cask. So let let me tell you about this though. You take the top off of that thing and sniff. Your sinuses are clear for a week. Yeah, fuego. It is. <laughs> but but it, you smell it, and it's like, okay, that's pilling paint off my car, but you drink it, and it's so smooth. Well, I've never tasted gasoline, so this can't be worse. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It can't be worse than that. So, yeah. We'll get back to it, though. Uh, real quick, um, let's, let's talk scenarios, okay? Um, we br brought up the castle rule, okay? Mm -hmm. And this was a, another part of the class that I really enjoyed um, because we, we discussed that different areas across the U.S., and you guys can really only speak on Arizona law because that's what you're, you're familiar with, and that's where you teach your classes out of. Yes. But the misconception about uh, the castle rule, like in Texas, you have the right to protect your house, and if your neighbor's on vacation, they could say, watch my house, and through that castle rule, you can shoot and apprehend somebody on your neighbor's property if you were to see them breaking into the house. Okay. Okay, the misconception is burglar comes into the house. Mm -hmm. They're not a, a, a direct harm or threat to you, but they're there for your TV. Mm -hmm. Now, you tell them that they need to leave. They continue to proceed forward. They have nothing in their hands. They're literally just walking to try to get your TV. I can shoot them, right? Just to grab your TV. Yep. No, you're not going to. That's going to be very difficult to articulate in the state of Arizona. See. And, and you're, this, I'm going to trigger it. I'm going to trigger the crap no, and, out and, of and, people. But, but see, when I took your class. Oh, I got. I got, saw you in the back. When I took your class, <laughs> I'm listening to this and I'm wanting to just scream, no, that's not how this works. You had a lot of cognitive dissonance there. I was so, so upset. Yeah. And that's why I'm glad we, we brought it, like, to the attention of... of the three of us, you guys brought to the attention of three of us. So explain to the listeners how this works. So the thing is, the fact of the matter is, in the state of Arizona, you have the right to, to threaten deadly physical force if somebody's in your home or where you're allowed to, to be, specifically your home. Um, when we have to use deadly physical force is, when we ha is, the, is only when we can articulate that there's either serious bodily injury and or death that is either about to happen or is happening um, when we talk about the whole difference between imminent and immediate but we have to articulate that that threat is actually happening to us or another because um, to defend if, if something's happening to you or something's happening to myself the self-defense laws are exactly the same but we have to articulate that based on the totality of the circumstances and if somebody's trying to steal your TV um, and walk out with your TV you can't articulate that they're they're gonna they're gonna kill you. Now, if we always get that question, what if they come towards you and raise the TV over their head and they're gonna smash you? I'm like, well, then okay, you have to paint that picture. Right, that's different. But okay, we're going day, on rabbit holes. Day, day and age of cell phones. Okay, okay, you're an intruder. I'm a homeowner. 
You come through the front door. The my dumbest dog, dude ever. My dog. <laughs> dumbest dude ever. <laughs> my, my dogs alert me, right? Mm -hmm. I get up. I grab the 380 that I have next to my nightstand. Okay. We meet at each end of the hall. That's a very small gun for a very big dude. It's my wife's. Okay. I have an AR-15. <laughs> I have an AR I'm not judging. Okay, I have you an grab AR the little guy. Yeah. The little He's guy. got the noisy He's cricket in his hand. hand. Right, yeah, yeah. So, grab the 380. We meet at the hallway. At this point, we're in the day and age of cell phone. I have a cell phone. I'm telling you, with my cell phone recording, you are being recorded. If you continue to make steps towards me, I will continue to take that as a threat. You need to turn around and leave or I will open fire. Person steps forward, I warn again. Steps forward again, I shoot. Mm -hmm. Am I liable at that point? Well, you're always liable, so understand that. Okay. Um, so we used a, used a word pertaining, and I'm not an attorney, so we're not going to get into this whole Perfect. this whole thing. We Good. are not. I like not that. A, I, I like that. I, I am not. So when they come to our class, we are not a. We're not bar certified attorneys, and that's what and people need to hear. Exactly. So when we talk about legal advice, all we do is teach the law, and then we teach the objective, reasonable standard, which is the based on a U.S. Supreme Court case law. But what you are always liable for every round and everything you do, everything you say. Everything you do in your life, you're always liable for it, mm -hmm. um, because that is a that's a that's a civil law um, uh, term. But when it when we're talking about, I'm guessing you're asking is, are you justified? Is that what yeah, you're yeah, asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with pertaining to that is you that's know, a, that's a better word. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to make sure it was you know yes, you're liable for that, but whether you're going to be successfully sued, we always tell people don't you shouldn't be afraid of being sued. Now is it a is it a can it be a life changing event? Absolutely, but you should truly be afraid of being successfully sued you're getting a judgment against you and your house being taken and stuff like that but with pertaining to justification there's you have to you want to you want to paint that picture um we talked we talked about in the class and i used bob ross as an example yeah. um bob ross smoked a lot of weed he smoked a lot of weed and he did his paintings and he painted pretty little trees and happy little birds and the first couple layers with his oil painting on his canvas you're like dude bob smoked too much weed that looks like shit. It looks like shit. Yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be bad, Bob. Right. But then Bob just tells you, stick with me. Mm -hmm. Smoke a blunt and and stick with me. Yeah. Eat some shrooms. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. You. Yeah. But. But he. But he's talking about stick with me and, and through the program and then magically as he starts adding more layers, you're like, that's a mountain scene with birds, and then you start seeing that. Yeah. Can there's, we camp there? Correct. Exactly. <laughs> but there's many layers to that painting, and just like there's many layers to an, a justification of use of force, so. You know, the question would be is, you know, what time of day did this occur? What time of day was this occurring? Um, have you been burglarized before? Have you, uh, does, did he have a weapon? Did he not have a weapon? Was he saying anything? Was he not saying anything? What were you saying? Well, we already established what you were saying. And, and that's, that's a beautiful thing you said because um, you're very calm. You're very collected. Um, you're very articulate through the whole thing. And you've, you've visualized and you've, you've, worked, you've worked through this, this scenario. Um, and so when, if God forbid it happens, yes, you're going to be elevated, your heart's going to be elevated. All of these, these things are going to be happening, but you've already been through here. Yeah. But I've shot people it's, before, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, it, and again, it's, 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 you've been there, you've done that, you've got that t-shirt. Um, and it's, I wouldn't say it's helpful, but it's, but it gives you that experience. Right. And so through your experience, training experiences, you know, that's how you paint that picture and get that justification on a, on a, on a prima facie or face value, yeah, I mean, you're you're in your own home. You're, he's not complying with your orders. He's walking towards you. He sees a firearm. You've, you've, you've told him, hey, if you take another step, you will be shot. Um, it looks, it definitely looks, I wouldn't say good. I don't want to say, it, I don't want to say shooting somebody ever looks good. But it, but the more layers you have on that, the better. You know, and I can't say, yes, you're justified in shooting that person or no. There's so many different factors, and that's what at times can frustrate people when we talk right. to them, because you just asked a very simple question, and how long has my answer been? It, but it's ridiculously the truth. long. But it's the truth. It, it is. There's it is. no. There's no correct scenario. There is none, and right. and that's the thing. And again, it goes back to your roots of being able to protect yourself and your family. Karen, you know, at what point do you have to? Karen, you, I'm just average right? Joe. Should I drill? Should I practice this? Of course. Okay, but why? 
Tell, tell the listeners why I should drill and practice these scenarios. So, so my, from my air marshal training, they used to tell us all the time, your body won't go where your mind has never been. Thank you. Here we go. So, you know, even if you're, if you read a few books and go through scenarios in your own head or talk to your spouse about or your significant other about what would we do if someone comes in the house, walk it, you know, walk it through. Just like when we were kids, they had, well, in Chicago, they had like the tornado drills. They would do the fire alarm and we'd hide under our desks and stuff or a fire drill. So what would, what would you do if it's the same thing? You're just preparing for in case it happens and you're both on the same page. Now, is it going to be perfect scenario? No, but at least you're giving yourself you know, a little bit of an edge or a step, you know, a step in the right direction in case something does happen or danger does come into your home. You don't have to sit there and wait for the guy or girl to make a move. You can set those boundaries. And if they, if they fail, if he, if someone comes in your house and they're stupid enough to look at you square in your face with a gun pointed at them and they keep coming at you, you know, I don't want to sound insensitive, but we say it all the time. You you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And it's not to you know, make fun of it or make it sound, you know, simplistic or insensitive. But But it is simplistic. It is what it is. We (laughs) have a right to protect ourselves and our families, and that's all it comes down to. We're not trying to be crazy renegades. We're just it's going back to basics and refusing to be a victim. I call it that reluctant warrior. Um, And what I was was about to say is it's primal fear. Yes. And that's where I feel like courts lose certain things. Mm -hmm. There's everybody has that fear. Mm -hmm. And if you can train and you can be clear and concise with what you're saying in that moment and, and control that fear and still execute when you need to be, not execute the person. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Let's be yeah. clear. But execute. Perform. And perform, perform. what you're doing. Then that is where you're going to protect yourself. You're right. Well, right? One, you're right. Yeah. One of the examples I use in class, because, and again, I think our, as a whole, Right, a society now watching social media or watching media, watching the news and, and being on social media, we're in fear of reacting. When let's take an animal, any animal that's out in the wild, let's just take a cat, right? Yeah. You put a cat in a corner and you bring a big dog into the room, what what's the cat gonna do if the dog goes after it? It's gonna hiss, it's gonna lift its back up, it's gonna claw at the dog, right? right? Do we have to teach a cat to do that? Not at all. No, but is someone telling the cat, listen, you can't do that because the dog will get very offended? Nope. You, so we're animals. We should be able to react in the way that we need to react. Now, again, we're intelligent human beings, and we need to well, justify it. Well, most of us. Relative. <laughs> yeah, relative. But is relative. Again, yeah. it all comes down Common to the... Common sense is few and far between. Yeah, <laughs> and I just feel like... <laughs> You know, back in the day, you know, Aristotle and, and, you know, all the philosophers and astronomers and, you know, all the stuff that they discovered back way back before we were here. Because I, I look at it in like 100 year increments, right? We're not going to be here forever. We're, we're only here. Let's just average it. We're all yeah. here for 100 years. There's only so much we can do. We can't change the laws that much. And if we if we do... And then our kids and the kids' kids are going to have to deal with it. I just feel like there's only so much we can do. Why don't we just go back to basics and say, look, you have a right to protect yourself. Let's just give people that right to do that. Guns are here. They're not going away. They're not going to do a big, you know, collection and they're all going to be gone. It's just like drugs. I don't want to get on that whole soapbox. But, you know, heroin is illegal, but it's rampant on our streets and in our schools. When when I had Lamb on, that was a discussion I had with him. You know, and I told what an amazing individual. Yeah, <laughs> like I, well, I told Lamb. I said, I said, dude, if you legalize drugs, you take the money from the cartel. Like, so, so I will, I'll flip you on that one. Okay, but here, here's go ahead, hear it out, because I don't know if you listened to that whole podcast or not. I listened. Yeah, I, I said, you open a hotel mm-hmm. that gives doctor assisted, medicated drugs. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, because your junkies are going to do it regardless. Sure. But now you're giving them a safe haven place to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And through that, we're already paying public funds to oh, yeah. to get these people off of it. Why not pay for them to stay on it, let them ruin their life if they need to? Like, you're going to make that choice, or they're going to make that choice regardless. Okay. I want them to make that choice away from my six-year-old daughter. I don't right want a self. needle at the park. Yeah. I don't want to find my daughter pick up a meth pipe. Yep. 
You, you see what I'm saying? Oh, you're right. You're so right. if if you were to legalize it and push it to a a, a place where they a safe can, haven, a safe haven, yeah. and where they're medically supervised, supervised, mm-hmm. that to me makes more sense. Okay. Now you don't have cartel wars. I mean, there's going to be wars regardless. Sure. I mean, fuck, they're trying to have wars over avocados right mm-hmm. now, right? Um, <laughs> but you're lessening the blow. Yes. So that's that's my take on it. But go ahead and so flip you, me upside down. So I, I'll, I, 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 I completely agree with key safeguarding your child away from that. I, I completely agree with that. Yeah. That's 100%. But the, the whole cartel thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, working in law enforcement and being a member of many professional professional associations that that I've actually been taught by cartel members um, but the, the flip side is if we say we legalize every every controlled substance that we that is known to us at this point um, if we and again I'm not gonna you know create a satire create a satire to it but if tomorrow they Ill- illegal uh, they deem Crayola crayons illegal yeah they're gonna be in the Crayola crayon business right if they if they illegalize like, for example, I made the joke when I was in the military. Um, if you have an amputated leg or a headache, you get what? Ibuprofen. 180, 800 milligram ibuprofen. ibuprofen. Yeah. Vitamin M, right? Yeah. I had, when I left the military, I had so much vitamin M that yeah. I was like the Pablo Escobar yeah, of right. ibuprofen. Right. I could kill so many stomachs and so many intestines. It yeah. was just beyond belief. <laughs> right. I could kill probably everybody's intestines yeah. in the United States. But if they illegalized ibuprofen tomorrow yeah. and people needed it, there's there will they will always provide supply to a to an illicit demand, so that illicit demand is whatever the whatever the product is. Right. If it's if it's French fries, or you know what, if they went to the New York model of the thirty two <laughs> the thirty two ounce super gulp. Yeah. Because New York you can't have the 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 big gulps. Pick your battles, right? People. They're, Jesus Christ. They they illegalized <laughs> high capacity. Uh, drinking devices. <laughs> drinking devices. High capacity. Drinking yes. devices. Yeah. You can well. drink upwards of 32 the ounces automa- per yeah. second. Yeah. Rapid fire. Yeah. Big <laughs> gulps. Right. The automatic straw dispensers are yeah. a problem in oh. California. Be careful. 30 yeah. caliber clips. Yeah. 30 <laughs> caliber clips. No, we shit on California every podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> Fuck California. <laughs> we, we, we shit. And I don't care if we have listeners out there. If your state is so great, Everybody that moved to fucking Arizona should go back. Yep. Exactly. From, yeah. So don't. Well, they're California. they're pardoning they're pardoning yeah. they're pardoning murderers Arizona. by the by the minute. I don't the governor's pardoning murderers by yeah. the minute. Commuting commuting sentences. But if they if there's a if there is an illegal sub substance or s- product that has a demand an illicit demand, they will b- always be in that business. And so. From a business standpoint, the cartels will always be in business, no matter what. Because there's always going to be something. Correct. Yes. There's always going to be something. From a business, a purely business standpoint, and this is where understanding and law enforcement, understanding your your competition, you're the criminal, that they're always going to be in business. Yeah. And so, like, when we talk about guns, legislating the gun, no, you can't legislate evil. I mean, I'm glad murder is actually illegal. See, and I'm glad heroin's illegal here, here's because nobody would do it, right? Here, here's my other take right. on it from a personal experience, too. Um, I brought up my kid, okay? Sure. My kid is never going to be as street savvy as I was. I won't allow it. Sure. The shit I dealt with as a kid will never be put on my daughter. You're trying to insulate that as much as you possibly right. can. And I look at what I figured out at a young age on my own dealing with you know a single mother that raised three boys like wow. worked three jobs at one point in time i was a wild wild fucking kid you still are <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't right. change right i was wild though but like i had common sense and i'll say this and we we talked about it it's few and far between today's youth does not have common sense they they idolize shit they see in new rap videos lean Cough syrup, yeah. bullshit, like whatever it may be, right? You know, Robo Trip and DX. Yeah, yeah, right. So I'll give a, a, a scenario that happened to me at a young age. I go to this girl's house, sixth grade, okay? Yeah. Uh, so you're she, like 10, 12, uh, 12, 12, 12? Yeah, yeah, about 11, 12, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, sixth grade, uh, her name's Crystal, and 
<laughs> Which is kind of funny because when you hear the story, it's going to be like, oh, of course her name was Crystal, right? Uh, <laughs> I know, you know it's going. <laughs> yeah. So go over there. She's in sixth grade with me. Uh, these two guys, older gentlemen, 17, 18 years old, show up to the house. They sit on the couch, give me a little noogie kind of, hey, who's this guy? Oh, Crystal, oh, that's my friend from school, right? Oh, is he cool? Yeah, he's cool. Don't worry about him, right? Next thing I know, they pull out a fucking meth pipe throw a fucking rock in, wow. and they start Blaze lighting up. up right in front of me. Oh, hey, where's your bathroom, Crystal? I got to piss. Oh, down the hall to the left. I crawled out a fucking <laughs> two-foot by one-foot bathroom window and ran the fuck home. Thank God. That's the kind of wow. shit I dealt with in sixth grade. Yeah. Had that been in a fucking safe haven place where these people could have done it, I might not have ever had to Experience that. see or deal with something like that at a, at a young age. Valid point. Valid point. You, 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 yeah. You see? Yeah. Again, so, differences of opinion. See, and you know what? I, just to say it, that's what makes America great. Right. We have differences of opinion. Right. But I can totally see it. Right. From a logical standpoint, the way you explain it. But had it. I not had common sense, hey, what are you guys doing? Or wanted to be that cool kid? Mm-hmm. And had I stayed there, what do you think they would have pressured me to do? You'd be a meth addict. Right. Yeah. And you wouldn't be as big as you are now. <laughs> <laughs> By no means. And I wouldn't have all my teeth. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, no. it's almost like they want to control every situation, too, you know? Because I, I have similar stories growing up on the south side of Chicago. The older guys doing drugs. And, you know, I it just petrified me. Yeah. But, you know, and then now we have our six-year-old. I'm going to do everything I can, just like you said about your daughter. I'm going to make sure she's completely shielded because there's just so much crazy stuff out well, there. But, but there, it, are we doing the same thing that the government's doing? No, no. But you say <laughs> shielded, but you say shielded in the in the correct sense. You're not coddling. No, you're not. No, you're so teaching not. your daughter the world is a dark place. Yes, you need to be prepared, and we're going to prepare you. Yep. How are you doing that? What do you do for your daughter? Let's talk about that. So, great question. Let, let's not mention her name. We don't need No, her. no, that's okay. okay. So, great question. So, uh, Karen and I are engaged. That's, that's, that's a no secret. Right. Um, we're going to be married here in a couple months. And, and that, that's the other thing with Guardian. That, and it, you know, just to digress for a minute, but that's, that's what the other thing about Guardian Family that's different. Family community. I told Correct. you from, from the start. Yep. Yeah. That, so, like, her and I, you know, we're engaged. Um, I have, you know, I have a daughter. And we're a family. And so, that's the other thing is that, that, I guess makes us a little different is her and I are both of our experiences are independent of each other. Nothing of what Karen knows. Well, some of the things she knows because she learns from the best, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I heard that. How right to there, shoot. Robbie. I heard that anyway. So, so range. yeah. Uh, anyway, keep it PG. Keep so it PG. no, it is PG. <laughs> Stick with me, kid. I'll show you some stuff. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but the fact matters her all of her experience is independent of mine. She, and mine's before this started, she told me her shot group was tighter than yours. I, I'm okay, just I'll own no, that. <laughs> I'll own that. And she it, never said that. I just, just like, you you no, just no, yourself. No, you know what? No. <laughs> <laughs> you see how this works? Yeah. Hey, you're good. Honestly, one of the reasons I so one of the reasons I was attracted to him so much is because he it didn't bother him. He, yeah. he took it and he was like, okay. She used yeah. her air marshal training on me. That's and she, great. she, uh, when the first time we shot, I'm like, okay, who's this chick? He's a good sport about and then it, she, which is good. She drilled yeah. five rounds right on top of each other. After I had a, a larger ragged hole, she had a very, you know, tight knit group. group. Yeah. And at first, I was like, damn, that hurts. My man card just got punched. Hold on, though. Did she do it sideways like a gangster? No, no, no. no. Okay, well then it doesn't no, count. No, she's doesn't Midwest, count. Though. She's Midwest. <laughs> no, she's Midwest. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so she, uh, so she, again, so I looked at it as, oh, my man car just got punched, but then I realized, I'm like, that's kind of hot. Yeah. And when we go to the range, it's amazing. Uh, we digress a little bit, but it's amazing taking uh, Karen, I don't want to say taking her to the range, but when we go to the range, the stereotypes are just so pervasive yeah in this community where they look at i carry the bags because i'm a gentleman i'm carrying the bags drop everything she lets me shoot that's a big <laughs> thing she lets me shoot first yeah she doesn't she yeah. doesn't i don't shoot first because she lets me shoot first yeah and then you know guys see that and they're like oh, okay that makes sense and then when she steps up they're like oh the he brought his cute little girlfriend to the right. range right and so she locks and loads and I step She's out there fucking John Wicking it. Because I know, because I know what's about to happen. I step 
step back, like Mike, you know that that whole meme with Michael Jackson eating the popcorn. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm the I'm that guy that's eating the popcorn. Watch the show. Yeah, and she cranks cranks rounds right on top of each other, and you usually see like a, at least one jaw drop, and then there's always at least one guy that comes up to me and go, "Don't mess with her." I'm yeah. like, and she's like, "Wow, you know that's awesome that you bring your girlfriend." And I'm like, no, that's yeah. she she takes me to the range. Yeah. As you can tell, like. I'm with her. She's not with me. Guys are coming up to her going, it's nice you brought your girlfriend to the ring. <laughs> <laughs> that's arm wrestle. No. <laughs> Do it. No, that's uh, great. I, I have to go to work eventually. I take my arm off. And then, uh, no, that's good. But no, so um, we were talking about raising, yes. raising kiddos. We yes. were talking about raising kiddos after the horrible tweaker di- digression. Yeah, right. But raising your kiddos... We take it. We take it very seriously. We yeah. How do you train your daughter for this? So this like, what, yeah. yeah, it's a great question. So <laughs> it's it was great. Uh, one of the first times. Um, so we believe. Uh, we believe, and from a firearm safety perspective, um, we believe in um, gun proofing our children, and not child proofing our guns. Um, so explain for the ones that didn't understand that we gun proof our children, and not child proof our guns. So, with regards to my daughter, um, I've I have guns locked up, and then my home defense guns are not locked up. And now this is a this is a, for a, for a parent. That's a personal decision. We guide our parents, and and based on our philosophies. So the best way of explaining it is we're a GPS guardian. Hopefully, is a GPS for somebody's life. We don't. So if you're driving down the road and you're trying to get to your destination, the GPS will tell you the most direct route. The, the short, not the shortest route. You can pick the shortest route, but all typically the shortest time frame route, based on their algorithms and their experience and their training of knowing how traffic patterns go. Our job is to be that GPS. Who drives the car? If you decide to go down the next block and it says recalculating, and you decide to go to the next block and turn, whose decision is that? The driver's. It's the student's job. It's the student's responsibility to drive the car. We just provide the GPS. So with that caveat in place, this is what we believe as the best model which prevents children getting shot with negligent discharges. Picking up in amazement a loaded firearm, dad's gun. And and it comes back to that first one is respecting property. Like that shotgun is your property. It's yours or your wife's or whatever the case may be. You may have to ask permission to touch your wife's, your wife's guns. But um, but it's a respect to property. That's number one. And then the second one is is respecting that it's it, it's a dangerous it's a dangerous item, and <clears throat> with that dangerous item comes training um, to to do that. Now, my your daughter and my daughter is very similar. Right? They're the same age. Right. Um, six years old. Both giants. <laughs> giants. It's right. A, it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. So, um, but the fact of the matter is, they're six years old. They still have. So when people are like, people always ask us, what's the, what's the earliest age I can get my, my, per, my daughter, son or daughter into firearms? That's a you decision. I'm never going to, tr- I'm never going to, I don't want to say Trump because that's, that could trigger. I will never usurp a parent's decision to, to teach their children. It's their, the maturity and the cognitive level is, is their decision. But my daughter can spout off the first firearm safety rule. And I do it almost every class. Right. You know, hey, what's the first firearm safety rule? And in front of 20-some people, she spouts it off. And I'm like, that's training. She wasn't born that way. So do I leave? Do I lay, have guns around the house that are unsecured Ab- and they're fully loaded? Absolutely. Yeah. There's, a, there's, always, a, there's always a balancing point between uh, accessibility and security. Right. Because if it's super secure, it's not accessible. Right. And if it's super accessible, it's not secure. Yeah. There has to be that, oh, wait, moderation. Now, now here, here's where I'm going to throw a wrench in a lot of people's uh, ears that okay. are listening. Even if they are accessible, right, what you're saying is training. That's fine. Even if they're not accessible, you still need to train your fucking kids how True. to use guns. True. Why? So why? Because yeah. what if it becomes accessible? Absolutely. It's, it's a reality. Yes. Can you make a mistake? And, and, that's, and that's where people make the mistake. Oh, it's secure. I don't need to teach my kid. No. Yeah. Yes, you do. Or we have the like, students. Or that's the students, a problem. Or we have the students that want to carry a gun, and there's like three different safeties, flip safeties, uh, push-button safeties. 
Well, this gun is inherently more safer than the gun that doesn't have... Well, like the Weiss 380 has zero, zero safety. Like my Glock that I carry. Yes. Well, people, the, at first glance, people are like, well, where's the flip safety at? I'm like, there is none. None. It is, almost, it is, it is a legitimate ready point to shoot, go. A legitimate point-shoot gun. Now, yes. there's, the, all, there's, there's all these passive safeties, but you still have to be able to press the trigger for the gun to go off, no matter what. It's still an inanimate, excuse me, an inanimate object. But the fact of the matter is, you can't keep all of your guns secure all of the time. No. What happens if they go to a friend's house? That's a reality. So do I do I have guns that are that are not locked up? Absolutely. I have to keep them accessible to, to protect excuse me, to protect my family. But my daughter also knows that if she wants to touch our property, whether it's Karen's gun or my gun, she asks first. And all she has to do is ask. So Daddy, can I can I touch touch one of your your guns? Absolutely. So under supervision of myself, I will probably unload it. And again, we always treat all firearms as they're loaded, but I will properly unload it, and then we go through it, and I let her handle my my firearm in a safe manner. Um, we just got uh, we just got a, a shipment of cert pistols, the red and black laser pistols. She has her own cert pistol now. So if she wants to... She's training with it. She's training with it. Good. So we're working on trigger control. We're working on all that. And people are like, are you out of your, you out of your mind? No. I'm like, no, I, I don't believe so. I don't either. I don't believe so. I and don't it's either. a completely safe environment. And she knows that that gun gets treated just like a real firearm, but there's also safety factors in place that also, you know, from, a, from an adult standpoint, I know this gun is not real. Okay but she's going to treat it like it's a real gun. Needs to. Yes, absolutely. That's that's the expectation. But you know, it's it's amazing when my my daughter interacts with other with other kids. Um, and she's very mature for for her age. She interacts with other kids. I see the difference. Mm -hmm. That the that it, it's not and it's that firearm safety doesn't just relate to firearm safety. There's a discipline factor that transcends into every aspect of her life. Right. And and so she, she knows that all she has to do is ask. Now, people ask us, well, what happens when she's a teenager and kids come over to the house? That's when it changes. Yeah. That's when the, the, the unsecured, unsecured guns yeah. now become secured. And that's a reality that I have to deal with. Because I can, I can control what my daughter does through raising her, in my opinion, properly. But I can't control what these other kids do. And I will not allow a child... And another person's child to gain access to my firearms right. and hurt themselves or hurt my daughter or hurt somebody else because you are liable for that. <clears throat> so, 100%. A, a quick morbid story that I remember as a kid, and I actually went to uh, junior high with this family, and my brother went to high school with this family. I won't name names for obvious reasons, sure. but late 1980s, early 1990s, Nintendo Duck Hunt. Oh my gosh. Right? Okay. Kids are playing. I love that game. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, right? I wanted to shoot that dog, dog every time. The dog. I wanted to shoot yeah. that I'm sorry. And you pointed the gun at the dog every time and tried to shoot, and it didn't. Because <laughs> he's laughing at yeah, you. Yeah, right. But uh, no, just a situation where player one and player two was middle brother and older brother. Younger brothers in the in the group. Mom and dad aren't home. Oh. You know, uh, Little brother goes to the bathroom, comes back. Older brother's sitting there, hole in his chest, dead. Oh, player God. one was older brother, player two was middle brother. Older brother beat middle-aged brother. Middle-aged brother said, oh yeah, I'll show you. Went and got the gun to play with it. Accidentally shot older brother in the chest to death. It was all oh in the papers. Oh my and gosh. <clears throat> it, it tore the family apart. To mom, be expected. Mom and dad got a divorce. Younger brother, uh, who I went to uh, junior high with, uh, severe uh, trauma. Oh, yeah. Uh, the brother that actually pulled the trigger by accident and killed brother. older brother, I don't even know what happened. Don't even know where that kid Probably went. fell off the face of the earth. Don't know. Yeah. I have no clue. My brother never saw him at high school again. Wow. Never. So I don't know if they charged him. I don't know if they sent him to like a boarding school. Nothing. But it, that situation right there had they been properly trained yeah and or the gun been secure because they weren't properly changed sure. trained would have never happened and, and of course that changes because if if you have a child with mental illness 
and mental well, illness is becoming a is becoming a big factor now. Yeah. That's for, so. Uh, that, that's another podcast. Oh no, yeah, yeah. That's and, we're, you know, I, but yeah. I'm talking about severe mental illness. Yes, I don't not, disagree. Like, not, I, I don't think disagree. I, know, I think you know where we're going is the yeah. the diagnosis of ADHD and the you know, it's, autism. It's, it's fucking bananas. Yes, but but I'm talking about like severe mental illness. Yeah. Yeah, you have to evaluate. You have to reevaluate. Yeah. That obviously, my my uh, our mode of thinking, the way we raise our daughter, that that probably can't happen because of the reality that you have a severely mentally ill child, right? Or there's a cognitive, uh, you know, disability. Or That's the different. fact that they pump these kids full of fucking psychotropics to begin with. You're right. You're absolutely right. And then want to pull them off of it. Oh yeah. And, and wonder I've, why they're dysfunctional. And I've seen that. I've seen that in my my career that. Yeah. You you see the you see the laundry list of of schedule two, schedule three drugs, mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah, holy, because like when I when I explain to a parent when I because I when I've taken a a yeah. a, a forensic uh, pharmacology classes because of my job really understanding that's drugs. interesting so like understanding how how drugs work and no, how they affect the body dude that is interesting when I look at Ritalin when yeah. you look at Ritalin. That is laboratory grade methamphetamine. Yes, it is. It, it's laboratory grade. Yes, you it look is. at oxycodone, hydrocodone, heroin. It's laboratory grade heroin. Yes. Desomorphine is desomorphine is, is heroin, and oxycodone or oxycotton, all of that is the laboratory grade. Yeah. What what is uh what's the uh, the one that this uh, so I worked with kids for seven years. Sure. Yeah. At, at a, troubled youth. Yeah, troubled yes. youth. But uh, the uh, tramadol. So tramadol. Dude, is a <laughs> tramadol is a non-narcotic uh, pain oh, really? killer. Yes, Dude, would put this kid to, to sleep. sleep. Yeah, I would have to carry him. Yeah. back to the cottage <laughs> to yeah. put him to bed. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean they'll be on the they'll be on the nod. They'll yeah. be sleepy, but it's non-narcotic. But well, what about uh, Seroquel? Don't mean to go off. Seroquel on the panel, is but. Seroquel is a mood stabilizer. Um, yeah. So they were pumping this kid from Nebraska oh. with nine hundred milligrams of Seroquel. In oh, he's the morning. zombie. Yeah, zombie. They took him off. He lost his mind, didn't he? went bananas yeah. we had to restrain him for four and a half hours after he tried to uh, murder himself because the, because because <laughs> yeah. they've, they've seen the studies and again i'm not a doctor right i'm not a pharmacologist i'm not a pharmacist right but the fact of the matter is they've seen that it's and, it, and through the studies they truly change the electric uh oh, dude, makeup you're, you're and the components your, of your brain your hormone compounds Correct. As everything well. yeah. every aspect of your brain it is changing yeah. forever with your frontal lobe not being completely fucking developed to correct. 22 23 anyway correct and you look at and you look at do you want do you want some more <laughs> creek water maybe just a splash look. <laughs> oh yeah but no Go so free. it's 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 changing everybody's it's changing or do you want tango mm. okay Go to the creek. <laughs> So, uh, Splash, I'm good. That's good. Thank but you, I, I, you look at like meth induced psychosis, right? Every spark plug in that meth addict's brain has fired, and then because they've because it's fired, you look at that brain now, you look at that person, and it's just a black hole. Oh, yeah, just yeah. a black hole. Yeah. And you're like, holy cannoli. Um, anyway, so about the kiddos, so that changes the game, the the that, but then also my daughter, so I already have a pact with my daughter, and she understands that. That if she goes to a friend's house, can I control what the parents do with their guns in their home? No. Zero. I have zero in- influence on that. I can ask them whether they do it or not. That's that's not up to me. <clears throat> Obviously, I have control over where my daughter goes, of course. Mm-hmm. That's that's another factor. But as she's a teenager, you you lose control of your child. and But you, you just hope that all of the control that you've put on them and the discipline, that, that then osmosis into their their way they're living and they make good good decisions going forward right because i deal with that all the time in my law enforcement career the 33 year old out of control son out of out of control at home <laughs> excuse me 33 33 years old <laughs> drug addict, still living at home right still living at home and now they want to kick him out hmm. are you kidding me and you have a tenant now this is a landlord tenant thing right and they're like no that's my son i'm like no he hasn't been your son in at least 15 years yeah yeah over but anyway, so if my daughter goes to a to a, a friend's house and a gun gets pulled out, I already have a pact with her that if she stops everything that's happening, she unloads the firearm and she gives a firearm safety lesson, she gets a free car. Jesus Christ. Because it's that important to me. Hi, Dad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, what about I know, I, you told me you had daddy issues. Like, that's, that's, getting, that's getting weird. Hey. That's getting weird. Hey. I didn't wink, so it's good. <laughs> it's good. 
Uh, well, I, I have like my Ravencrest knife. It's gonna get bad. <laughs> it's gonna get bad. <laughs> it's gonna get bad over here. Right. Okay. Arms distance, please. <laughs> well, speaking of the knives, we so we allow we allow her to have a cert pistol, practice pistol that has the working trigger and the and the lasers. Mark that time. But um, but she's not allowed to cut her own food, so she's not allowed to have a knife in her hand. But we give her a practice. Sure practice pistol so that's the other um thing that we we like to talk about in class about it's just this kind of brainwashing that guns are bad well so are knives it depends on you know i have a knife block we have a knife block on our kitchen counter and she walks past that 15 times a day that's now, why what cracks isn't, me up yeah right? are we going to own yeah. knives now yes. so not to get on the, the whole no 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 issue, it's but, no it's fine but it's just it's the way we're looking at it and i think um, I think it's a brainwashing, and I keep going back to that because it is. It's what they're pumping through the airwaves, and that's what kids are seeing and hearing, on, and the parents are talking well, but, about politics. But you live that and, lifestyle. We don't. Yeah. You live that lifestyle in Chicago. Right. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's so, a personal story that you deal with. So. Yeah. So I have like a, a basically a K-bar from when I was in the military, and I did a video on Facebook where I took a kitchen knife, and I took my K-bar, and then I took... Uh, the 380 and then I took my AR-15 and I pointed to the kitchen knife. I said, this is a knife. And I pointed to the K-bar and I said, this is an assault knife. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I said, this is a gun and this is an assault gun. I said, no, that's not how this works. Yeah. They are what they are. It doesn't matter what you try to name them. Correct. The intent of what somebody does with that weapon is what makes them a weapon. Sure, absolutely. And and that's 100% well, where it was. In my in my in my thinking and again from a law enforcement perspective and enforcement perspective, I'm not in the jurisprudence field of of working in the courts and I'm not in a, the civilian realm, but I, I live that world, but I'm right in that middle. But you know, if we start enforcing the laws completely with pertaining to the laws that we have now, yeah. that would be a good start. That would that would be a good start. How about how about when unauthorized kids get when kids school shooters start killing people and then we start going back and looking at how they're getting their guns. For example, the Columbine guns were purchased for, for a straw purchase. Yeah. Were purchased illegally. Were purchased illegally by somebody else and were given to the killers. Right. They weren't charged. Yeah. They they were not charged federally for that. Yeah. So how about we just start enforcing the laws that we have? And that will be a good start. Like and we'll it. see how that works. And then use that as a case study to build if, you know what, we need to tweak these laws. We need to change these laws. Maybe because we're enforcing the laws that we have now. Gotcha. I like it. It's just, it's just bigger thinking. Well, yeah. that's the thing when they, you know, when everybody, you know, the first thing everybody starts jumping on. Oh, we, you know, we got to take guns away. We got to ban guns. We got to this. We got to that. Like, start and look at the laws. There's not... The, the laws that are there, like, there's no law that would prevent certain things from happening. But if you take the laws that you have on the books and follow through with them every step of the way, mm -hmm. half of the crimes couldn't exist because Correct. it would have been stopped Correct. 10 steps in the past. Right. And they, they, but they, they wait until it's a blow up. And then everybody just points fingers. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it off air, but I got a few little things. Tidbits? Yeah. For but, it, but it's funny because I don't know how many people we've had at the range. Because I, I, have, I have an AR-15 that I carry on duty. I have an AR-15 at home. Yeah. And people are like, those scary black rifles. And I'm like, have you ever shot an AR-15? And they go, no. And that's my realm that I live in from former, former military and current law enforcement. That's, that's, my, that's my realm that I live in and, and pertaining to that rifle. And people ask me all the time, what's the best home defense gun? It's got to be a 12-gauge shotgun. I'm like, absolutely not. No, yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah, unless you're shooting a slug. Correct. <laughs> I said, but, you know, you have the aspect of the overpenetration. Yeah. The slug will go through through most of your house. You know, your... I almost went there. Go ahead. What's that? I, we, I always say something stupid. So. <laughs> you said overpenetration. I was going to ask my wife. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So you have all of those factors. You have all those factors. And then the operation of the gun itself that, that the average person just can't, you know, they can learn how to shoot a shotgun, but the, the, uh, 
the learning curve is quite steep. Yeah. Um, can you change out the ammunition? There are a lot of people who go, I like the shotgun because I can change out the ammunition. I can carry slugs or I can carry buckshot. I say, can you do that on the fly? Right. Can you change out, can you change out on the fly a, a single slug select or a double slug select or change from there? And they're like, no. Right. I'm like, that's Bird where training shot, comes shot, buckshot. That's where training comes it, in. Yeah. And so, and then they're like, oh, a handgun. I'm like, actually, a handgun takes more training, a steeper learning curve than a rifle. And my, it's, oh, dude. It's a I, lot harder. I'll, I'll be the first to tell you I suck with handguns. No. Like, a, a target shooting? Like, Not I'm so a, much? No. But you put me with an AR-15, like, ready, <laughs> ready to go. I'm shooting rattlesnakes from a distance. Correct. Like, no problem. Yeah. And so, then you have 30 rounds available to you, or whatever your law, laws allow. You have a, you typically have an optic system. You have a lighting system. Mm-hmm. And you have a sling. And children can shoot this firearm. Mm-hmm. And, and breathing these, techniques from correct. the prone position, or, tr- trigger pull, yes. everything. It's key. And yeah. then the other aspect is the last one is that five a quality five five six or two two three round mm-hmm. that is good quality for defensive use will will go through less walls than handgun rounds. Yeah. So now you don't have that to use your words over penetration right. aspect into those walls. are your words I was just having fun with well, you you're, uh, you're, you're meaning behind the words I'm just having fun <laughs> See, I just start thinking about what right. he was talking yeah. about um, so yeah there, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of myths out there and it's because of the internet it's because of the media um, I had a very very staunch discussion about the AR-15 that they blow huge holes into people I'm like have you ever shot somebody get, <laughs> get somebody shot by, by yeah. a 5 five? it's a very small permanent cavity yeah. It's a very large temporary cavity inside, mm-hmm. but it's a very small t- temporary cavity. I said, now, have you seen somebody get shot with a 12-gauge slug? Right. It's, it's, it's carnage. Yeah. And, yeah. and they're like... Just shoot a watermelon with one. Correct. And shoot a watermelon with the other. But we're not talking about the 12-gauge shotguns. We're talking about the evil black rifles. Right. And now I don't want them to go after 12-gauge shotguns now. But it's a reality of the situation. It is absolute misinformation. And, and, well, it baffles you know. me because it's... it's, it's you know, it all goes back to education through the whole thing anyway. But yeah, the scary black rifle. But, you know, that hunting rifle on the shelf right next to it is the same two two three round that they use to hunt deers with. Nailed it. Why? Because one looks scary. One is an assault rifle. One is scary looking. One is like... And that is a legal term. That is an, that is, the assault rifle is a legal term. That's crazy. It's not a technical term. It's not a mechanical description of the rifle. It does not des- it does not describe the rifle. It it's a it's it's a it's a it's a legal term. Yeah. Liability and all that. It's all legal. Those are all legal terms that somebody put a label on at one time in history. Tell the listeners what AR actually stands for. Do the to some of them don't know? Arm, I mean, Arm, Armalite rifle. A lot of people don't know that. Armalite rifle. Yes. Eugene Stoner. The creator of the air. No, it stands for assault rifle. rifle. Yeah, assault yeah, rifle it's or automatic rifle. Second, yeah, or automatic yeah. rifle. Automatic. So I've heard automatic rifle, yeah. assault rifle. Well, the, a- the AK forty seven is automatic killer. Oh, is it? <laughs> Have you heard that one yet? <laughs> really? I've no, never heard that dude, one. That was I'm not even made. joking. I'm but, not even joking. Who needs an AK? Who needs an AK forty seven? That's an automatic killer. You you don't need one of those. I was okay. like, oh. Lord. Well, but Somebody the AK does yeah. have automatic in it, though. Yeah, the no. of Kalashnikov. Yeah, but but I've also had instructors. I had one instructor that I I worked with. I wouldn't say he's a colleague, but this is how this is how misinformed it is. I actually had an instructor say that an AK-47 does not have a safety on it, and I'm like, you mean that big flap that goes up and down? I was, I was about to say, like, wait, what? That's like, a huge. Uh, but yeah. again, it it's it's so pervasive in our society. That if I take if I take an internet class, and I get my piece of paper, I become an instructor. Yeah. Or I take a four hour, and this is where and this is where we're gonna dog our own our own curriculum. I take a four hour concealed carry class, and now I'm good. Right. I don't yeah. need any I don't need any other training. Now I'm not saying take more training with Guardian, but there's people that truly believe I take a four hour class, concealed carry class, and I'm good. Right. I'm like. Good luck with that. Yeah, no. That's, that's all in conversations that have preconceived notions that I and cognitive dissonance that I can't change. Yeah. If you ever hear me say "good luck with that," that means conversation's comes, over and we're done. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. That. Well, yeah. let's wrap it up with a statement for for listeners out there who who don't think they should attend a concealed weapons carry course. I'm not specifying yours. 
I want a statement as to why they should attend. What would you say to the listeners that, that don't know anything about handguns or rifles or automatic killers? <laughs> <laughs> well, g- give me a statement. What would you sum up what you guys do at Guardian sure. as a statement? For our concealed carry class? Or for any? So our, our philosophy is this. We are going to arm you with information so you can make a better decision later. And I'll give you a perfect example of some very good friends of ours. They're uh, from Iowa. Talk about from, the one uh, in Fountain Hills. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got some very good friends of ours. Uh, they're a married couple. Um, he, I believe he's got handguns um, in, in the house, and then she wants nothing to do with handguns. But they both attended our CCW class because she wanted to know what it's all about. She knows nothing about the laws and knows nothing about guns, but she wanted to sit in our class to get the information. And after she sat in the class, you could almost see the light bulb kind of go off in her brain. And she said, you know, now I get it. Now I understand what the signs mean when I see the no firearm signs. Now I understand where I can go to learn about the most up-to-date laws. And now I understand what my spouse is thinking when he carries and what he's legally allowed to do with justification of course and so that's where we're trying to turn the whole industry kind of on its head to say look it's just information we're not trying to shove anything down anyone's throats we want you to be more informed and I experienced that organically when I moved out to the valley from Chicago and through and I followed my dad poor guy can't get away from me I followed him (laughs) along the lines of the Chicago PD but um he would just organically tell people, oh, Karen, you know, was a firearm instructor because people would say, hey, I always want to learn how to shoot. You guys are cops. You know, can you teach me? And he'd say, hey, Karen was a firearm instructor. She can take you out. She can show you. She can help you figure out what you want to carry, et cetera. And I realized there are so many people out there that want to learn and they want to know more. They just don't know where to go. And so that's what we're, that's what we're trying to do is just being like an information house and like Jay said earlier, we're not a, a training company or we're not a tactics company that does training. We're a training company that can, you know, if you want to just the bare, bare basics, what kind of gun should I buy, where should I carry it, how should I carry it, all the way to, you know, shooting and moving. We can do all that too. So yeah. um, so that's why we, we're trying to get that out to the public like we're not just trying to shove it down people's throats we're just trying to be an information house for people so they can learn more and whatever it is that you want to get out of it we can tailor it to that person specifically and i think that's what makes our company different is because of our why and because of because of what we teach and why we teach it we want to empower our our, our again our, our students with information through education and information <clears throat> because all of our, our demographics of all our past students have been ranging from six-year-olds and our oldest student was 92 years old Mm -hmm. Um, we actually just secured a contract with a senior living community an assisted living community memory care where these people are being targeted with scams the elderly is being targeted with scams the the robocalls that all of us get that you know from 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 africa and, and eastern europe and taking your money we're arming them with that information to say no because i the record i've had in law enforcement was thirty-five thousand dollars this lady got $35,000 taken from her Jeez. by a scammer. And she was an elderly lady, and that was, you know, that's a life-altering event. And then we have, we're working with the Pinal County Sheriff's Office. We're talking to their, some of their employees with safety and awareness. We have all of these demographics, and we want to arm them all. And this is nothing about, and, and a grand majority of that does not talk about guns. We, we, we glance on them, but it's not what we're talking about today. This, this very strong, I wouldn't say rhetoric, but the... But this very strong gun talk, um, a lot of it is discussion, discussions about uh, mindset, awareness, safety, having a plan, God forbid, without a firearm. You know, that's the big thing a lot of people, people talk about. And I'll give you an example is the Route 91 Festival. Um, because I'm an active shooter instructor, um, working with the federal government on that regard, um, I, get to, I get privy to a lot of after-action briefs with these active shooter events. And the Route 91 Festival... There should have been, in my opinion, there should have been twice as many people dead. And the only reason there wasn't that many people dead was because there were first responders off duty, first responders on duty, 
former military that have been overseas and understand medical care, improvised tourniquets, hemostatic agents, um, occlusive chest seals or dressings on, on that. And then the other aspect is they're, they're stealing trucks and putting bodies, live bodies on trucks <coughs> and then taking them to the hospital. And then as quick as they get to the hospital, they dump the bodies off at the hospital. Then they go to, they go back and put more bodies on and they go from there. So it's having a plan. It's not, and it's not, and a lot of times it doesn't even involve a firearm. We're going to the Coyotes game tonight. People ask me all the time, you carry a firearm everywhere. I, sometimes I can't. Right. You go through metal detectors at, at, at the stadium. But you're damn sure that when I go to the hockey game tonight, I'm going to have a plan because I'm going to have my daughter with us. I'm going to have a plan if somebody decides to attack, shoot the place up or whatever the case may be. And none of it involves a firearm because we don't have them. We can't bring them in there. Train and drill. Train and drill. Love it. What are you doing today to prepare for tomorrow? That's our motto. Love it. Well, where can where can our listeners find you guys? GTCtrain.org is our website. Facebook, Instagram, Google, Yelp. Those okay. All of those. So on Instagram? Instagram, you got Guardian Training Consulting. Okay. Um, and then same thing with... Uh, Facebook. Same thing with Facebook. Okay. Um, so Guardian Training Consulting, Facebook and Instagram, and then... Uh, Google Yelp. Website is gtctrain.org. That's where we have all of our classes listed, and you can contact us through yeah. our website. As a lot well. of people ask. We don't have scheduled firearms training. We don't schedule it, but we do private instruction. Um, that's what makes us different as well. We can come to you. We, we've done so many customized classes from corporate events um, to doing concealed carry classes for a motorcycle club in a living room. We get 12, we got 15 people together, 15 people together did it in a living room, on their flat screen TV and did a concealed carry class and they got all their concealed carry permits for that. That's awesome. Um, so we can come to you and then uh, schedule firearms training through us. Um, you know, the weather's getting cooler so we're probably going to go outside here very, very soon. Um, I'm not averted to going in 100 degree weather but I am. I, I'd, <laughs> I'd rather not. Right. Um, but the fact of the matter is that's where we develop, we deliver that customized experience. Just contact us. Give us your problems and we'll try to give you solutions. All right. Well, um, I'll end with the fact that uh, I value uh, not not your company. I value you as people. Wow. Thank you. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> what is it? Uh, community. I value the community that you you present uh, with just the overall knowledge. The lack of uh, individuals that don't have this knowledge need to seek it. So uh, people like you are what bring communities together properly. So... A lot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> hard. <clears throat> what is going on with me? Yeah. Are you choking up? A little <laughs> bit, dude, because <clears throat> we just talked about this the other day. Wow. It's community's hard. Yeah. And it's like without people that uh, come together like this and help one another out, people don't learn. So we'll wrap it up right there. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey Tim Talks. Thank you guys. Thank you.